Awesome. So, uh, let's give you one. <laughs> and now charades! <laughs> Quick change! Charades is a good idea, actually. Yeah. Hmm, what you should do next year. Anyways, uh, no, we, you're going to be reacting to some YouTube comments. From, so we've gone through some, uh, some Cowboy Bebop videos that are popular on YouTube, and we took a selection of some comments from uh, YouTube, from your fans. So, uh, do we have... We do! Let's cue the first comment. We're going to ask for you to react to these, please. Cowboy Bebop is one of the very few animes where the dub is superior to the sub. It just fits the characters so well, and the casting was spectacular. 90 likes. Nice. Tell us about that experience. I think you probably hear that a lot. Uh, particularly Mary, as being the, the commander-in-chief of that production. Talking to us about that experience of doing that dub, and how you hear it from fans all the time about how it's well, one of the only ones that's superior. Well, I, I don't know about superior. I, I think we, we had a great opportunity to adapt a story that it was one of the first animes that I had seen that really seemed to be made for a Western audience. And uh, when we first got it, uh, they gave it to me because it actually wasn't uh, a success in Japan. I think they edited some of the episodes and they put it out in Japan, like six episodes that were edited down, and it just didn't resonate with anyone. So when we got it, and I took a look at it, I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is so wonderful. And uh, it was a chance for us to take a different tack in terms of the style of acting. Because I think anime can be big, very big and broad and everything else, and this was really a chance for us to match the style of the animation and the storytelling by bringing it down into a more cinematic place in terms of vocal print. So that's what I was really striving for, is like, let's make this naturalistic, completely naturalistic, but still funny and everything else, but uh, to make it, I really wanted it to sound as if it was animated for English. Uh, because Watanabe seemed to be, it seemed to be just 26 love letters to uh, different styles of filmmaking, uh, from science fiction to western to black exploitation to all these different styles of films, along with this amazing storytelling that was really just seemed to be more geared to a western audience. And I don't know why, but so that's what we did. And we had a great time doing it for what we thought no one would ever see it. So we'll just like, let's just make it for us, you know? Because there was no tsunami or anything to watch at the time. You know? Just one comment about the casting on it. I think the casting was kind of genius. Yes. Uh, by Kevin, Kevin Seymour, who made a lot of the anime that you guys love. But he inherently must have known how our personalities would drive because we came into the room recording individually. And yet, we became this family after the fact. We, we love each other. We're, you know, you saw how we reacted to uh, Bo and Melissa, too. Uh, I don't know how he knew that. I don't know how he knew that chemistry would work, but it really did. So, so yeah, it's very intimate, um, and even very cinematic animes with the dubs when they match that intimacy with the perfect. The other thing that, that was given to us was uh, Watanabe uh, did something which is unique, uh, I think, for storytelling, uh, and it was telling the story through three different ways, through dialogue, and normally most stories are just told through dialogue. We had dialogue, we had animation, and we had music. And each one of these three things had their chance to shine, to resonate, and to breathe. So it wasn't minute to minute, all, you know, dialogue, 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 dialogue. It was this beautiful, unique, intimate, almost slow style of storytelling that really let things land and resonate. Uh, and then it picked up with all the action and everything else. But there were always quiet moments, which is unusual in animation. You know? so. Do we have a nice YouTube comment? When Steve Bloom and Wendy Lee are in the same movie, I can't help but love their characters, even if they are. <laughs> <laughs> how does that feel, Wendy? Yeah. Tell us how that comment makes you feel. <laughs> I just feel so honored that we've been teamed up so many times, especially in, the, in our early career. This, it seemed like we had back-to-back -back series together for some time, and then recently, well, I guess it's been a few years now, we did um, Expel from Paradise. And we were teamed up again, and it was really lovely to just be in that comfort zone. I know that when I'm working opposite Steve, I'm really well-supported, and I feel like 
we have kind of a, a scale of balance between the resonance of our voices and the way that we both approach humor. Um, that we can have really dry moments and then we can have, you know, physical humor and also that there's like this banter that goes on with our characters in most cases. And it came across in the Big O, um, certainly in Bebop and... Vegas um, XLR. Vegas. Oh, gosh. It was just... Oh, yeah. I mean, and also a bit of a role reversal each time because I often would play some, sort of a secondary lead and then we invert that in other scenarios. And then um, I was kind of a straight man girl in Vegas. And Jamie, Steve's character, was clearly, you know, the, the, the side, <laughs> he was like the side character, comic, timing. I mean, you, you play the straight guy a lot yeah. until the girl scream. And then everybody falls apart. And then, yeah, that's the best girl scream ever. Yeah. You and Johnny Bunch. <laughs>